Hi, my name is Sarah Cosgrove. I'm an assistant professor of medicine at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases and an associate hospital epidemiologist at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. The purpose of this module is to examine evidence for best practices for placement and maintenance of central lines. The learning objectives for this module are to review evidence for the five key best practices for prevention of central line associated bloodstream infections. For the rest of the module, I will refer to central line associated bloodstream infections as CLABSIs. The five key best practices are to remove lines that are not needed, to perform hand hygiene when placing and maintaining central lines, to use maximal barrier precautions when placing central lines, to use chlorhexidine as the preferred antiseptic for skin antisepsis, and to avoid use of femoral lines. In addition, I will review briefly approaches for central line site care. I'm not going to discuss further the importance of removing unnecessary lines other than to say that this is one of the most important interventions that anyone can make in an ICU or other setting to prevent CLABSIs. Obviously, if a patient has a central line in place that is not being used, this is just an unnecessary uh, invitation for that line to become infected. Units should consider approaches to evaluating on a daily basis how to ensure that clinicians assess the need for the catheters and have them removed if they are no longer needed. Hand hygiene is an important approach to preventing all nosocomial infections. And prevention of CLABSIs are no exception. Since 1977, seven prospective studies have shown that improvement in hand hygiene significantly decreases a variety of infectious complications. Hand hygiene is easy to perform, particularly with the uh, introduction of alcohol-based hand cleaners in the hospital setting and should be a critical component in the process of placing a central line or in doing central line maintenance. Next, I'll discuss maximal barrier precautions. I think it's worth defining what maximal barrier precautions are. For the provider, this means performing hand hygiene, donning a non-sterile cap and mask, and sterile gowns and gloves. All hair should be under the cap, and the mask should cover the nose and mouth tightly. For the patient, it's important to cover the patient's head and body with a large sterile drape. This is an image of what a patient who is appropriately draped looks like. Obviously, this might be uncomfortable for the patient, and it's important to keep up communication with the patient to make sure that they are not feeling claustrophobic or uncomfortable under the drape. In addition, there are now drapes available that have windows so that the patient can see out while the procedure is going on. There have been three studies that have addressed whether maximal barrier precautions are important in prevention of CLABSIs. Uh, two of them are over a decade old. The first uh, was performed in 1991. Uh, by Mermel and colleagues, and this was a prospective non-randomized study that examined uh, the use of maximal barrier precautions for placement of Swan-Ganz catheters. The odds ratio for infection without maximal barrier precautions was 2.2. Uh, this means that use of maximal, maximal barrier precautions uh, effectively decreased the risk of subsequent CLABSI. In another study performed in 1994 by Rad and colleagues, Central lines in patients in an oncology center were evaluated, and patients were randomized to either have maximal barrier precautions or standard uh, precautions for placement of their central lines. The odds ratio for infection without maximal barrier precautions in this study was 3.3. More recently, Lee and colleagues have performed another prospective non-randomized uh, study looking at central lines. Uh, and again found uh, an increase, increased odds ratio of 5.2 associated with not using maximal barrier precautions when placing central lines. Thus, the overwhelming majority of evidence points towards use of maximal barrier precautions being a critical approach to preventing CLABSIs. Another critical approach to preventing CLABSIs is using appropriate skin prep and making sure that it is also applied correctly. 
Several studies have been done comparing chlorhexidine with povidone iodine. Although many of these studies were small and did not show uh, by themselves a difference between chlorhexidine and povidone iodine, when they were combined in a meta-analysis, there was a significant benefit seen with the use of chlorhexidine rather than povidone iodine. This graph shows the results of that meta-analysis published in 2002. The summary of data presented in this meta-analysis showed a risk ratio of 0.49 associated with use of chlorhexidine rather than povidone iodine solutions. These results have led to a recommendation that chlorhexidine be considered the a skin antisepsis of choice for placement and maintenance of central lines. Another approach to prevention of CLABSIs is choosing an appropriate site for placement of the central line. We currently recommend avoidance of the femoral site due to the results of several studies that have shown that the femoral site is associated with increased risk of central line associated bloodstream infection. This randomized control trial of femoral versus subclavian lines in the ICU showed that there were several important adverse outcomes associated with lines in the femoral site. There was a higher rate of infectious complications in the femoral line group, 20% versus 4.5%. There was a higher rate of thrombotic complications in the femoral group, 21.5% versus 2%, with complete thrombosis occurring in the femoral line site at, in 6% of cases compared to none in the subclavian site. And similar rates of mechanical complications, uh, 17 versus 19%. Uh, this latter finding uh, showed a, a non-significant difference uh, between complications in patients who had femoral lines and who had subclavian lines. This is important because many clinicians state that they choose the femoral site over the subclavian site because they believe it's associated with fewer mechanical complications. It's important also to note that there have not been randomized controlled trials comparing infections between the subclavian site and the internal jugular site or between the femoral site and the internal jugular site. For this reason, we think that the easiest recommendation to follow is avoiding the femoral site. Some institutions do choose to make the subclavian site the preferred site of central lines due to some non-randomized studies that have suggested that this site is associated with decreased catheter colonization and perhaps decreased risk of CLABSI. So just to review, the five key strategies for prevention of CLABSIs are to remove catheters when they're not needed, to perform vigilant hand hygiene when placing and maintaining catheters, to use maximal barrier precautions both while placing a catheter and for the patient who's having the procedure uh, performed on him or her, use of chlorhexidine preferentially for skin antisepsis, and avoidance of catheters in the femoral site. Finally, I'd like to make a few comments about catheter site and hub care. We focused a lot on uh, what to do when placing a central line, but it is also important to think about how the central line will be cared for uh, after it has been placed. Current recommendations are to clean catheter hubs and injection ports with 70% alcohol or chlorhexidine and alcohol combinations before accessing. This is very important because the longer a catheter stays in, the greater the risk there is of hub colonization and introduction of bacteria or yeast uh, from the hub into the lumen of the central line, which can lead to CLABSI. Often in the heat of the care of critically ill patients, it can be easy to forget to disinfect the hub and injection port every time they are accessed. But this is very important and should not be ignored. In addition, this should be part of all education protocols that are put together to assist in ensuring appropriate maintenance of central lines. In addition to placement of central lines, chlorhexidine should also be used at the time of dressing uh, changes and site care. Transparent dressings should be changed routinely every five days, uh, and site care should occur at this time. The exception to this rule is that if the dressing is loose, soiled, or damp, then it should be changed when these findings are observed. Finally, 
uh, recommendations are to replace administration sets not used for blood products or lipids at least every 96 hours. The action items for this module are to assess compliance with best practices for catheter ins insertion, to assess compliance with best practices for catheter site care, and to address solutions for barriers to best practice. It is important to go to ICUs and other areas where catheters are being placed and make sure that the five key best practices are being performed. Often collection of data on, this, on these processes can be very helpful to facilitate improvement. Thank you and good luck in efforts to prevent all preventable central line associated bloodstream infections.